Prescription drugs plays a significant role in the American life, with nearly 70% of all U.S. citizens taking one or more medications. This is a hard pill to swallow, considering most people are still sick and dying while these drugs are not working. The number one condition treated for, of course, is heart disease. Surprisingly, the second most common prescription is for antidepressants, which suggests mental health is a huge issue. Okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat things here. I'm going to tell you like it is. Many people today are becoming heavily dependent upon medications and doctors instead of looking to our creator for healing. These pharmaceutical drugs not only don't heal, but they pose many other threats. In fact, adverse drug reaction is now the number one leading cause of death in the United States, with over 2 million reported incidents and over 100,000 deaths a year. In this program, we're going to go back and look at God's prescription for wellness and how you can walk in divine health. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. In this program, we'll be exploring the healing oils of ancient scripture, along with their powerful healing constituents. Nearly seven out of 10 Americans were prescribed for at least one drug in 2009, and half were given two or more, according to new research from Mayo Clinic. The most commonly prescribed drugs were antibiotics, antidepressant, and painkillers, according to this study. Now, the good news is the Bible provides us with answers to our health issues and what we should be using for sickness. The scriptures tells us that God gave us natural herbs, including their extracts, for medicines. Ezekiel 47, verse 12 reads, And the river upon the bank thereof, and on this side and on that side, shall grow trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall their fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they are issued out of the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereon for medicine. And in Revelation 22, 2, it reads, In the midst of the street of it, and on this side of the river and on the other, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. You see, many of the essential oils of the Bible come from plant leaves, and are considered the lifeblood of the plant. Essentials circulate throughout the plant to carry out its functions as a living creation, while the fatty oils remain in the seed where they serve as food for the young plant as God intended. So let's take, for instance, our orange. Everyone's familiar with this and it smells wonderful. Now, if you were to pinch the skin or the rind, this is where the essential oil is released, and you can smell it. It really is great, so uplifting. And that's because most citrus fruits have the essential oil stored in the rind. We're going to take a break now. We'll be right back. So what is an essential oil? Essential oils are a fragrant, vital fluid distilled from flowers, shrubs, leaves, trees, roots, and seeds. Because they are necessary for the life of the plant and they play a vital role in the biological processes of the vegetation, these substances are called essential because they carry out the lifeblood, the intelligence, and the vibrational energy that endow them with their healing power to sustain their own life. Essential oils are God's original medicine because they were created on the third day. You see, when God created these plants, his word went forth in power, creating life and continues to create life in the lifeblood of the plant, which is the oil. Genesis 1, 12, 13 says, And the earth brought forth grass, an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Some of the aromatic plants and their parts in which essential oils come from include trees, grasses, fruits, 
needles, roots, and seeds. And I want to take a look at some of these now. From the tree, we can get gum resins. Now, on this, this is frankincense. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually a gum resin in which the tree is pierced and the sap runs out and hardens into these droplets. They call tears. Another tree is from which we get myrrh. Myrrh, again, is a gum resin in which the droplets harden into these uh, droplets called tears. This is another form of myrrh that is collected from the tree sap. And this is actually uh, one of the fragrances that was used in the incense, known as the stratus benzoid. And this is also a gum resin from the tree. And when we look at some of the other part, uh, plant parts used, we have cedar. The cedar wood would be taken from the leaves. These are cedar tips. And this particular cedar I have over here, this is actually from Lebanon. This is the cedar of Lebanon, written in many times mentioned in the Bible. And so this is what would be used to create what we have as cedar wood. Other plant parts would be the roots. Now we have the calamus that's taken from the root. We also have, this is a spikenard. And this is a powder, as you can see here, a very dark powder, rich. This was mentioned in the Old and New Testament. Other grasses would include lemongrass, citronella, some of these other ones. The fruit would be from the peels, the rind, the, uh, you saw the orange peel, lemon, limes, this would be a part of the fruit. For the leaves of the tree, the twigs may be used in the case of eucalyptus or tea tree. For flowers, we see roses is a very popular oil, lang lang and jasmine. I don't have any of those here. Um, some of the others would be, for instance, if you're um, looking at the trees, we have, this is cassia. And uh, you can see this is mentioned in the holy anointing oil. Now this is cinnamon bark. And if you take a look at this, you'll see there's a difference in these. Cinnamon bark is a much more expensive oil, but these are the ones you're probably most familiar with because they sell these in the grocery store. And so that would be used for cinnamon, bar uh, cinnamon bark oil. Aniseed comes from this little pod where they use the seeds. Another seed would be mustard seed. These are tiny little seeds. And that's where they would use the mustard seed. Um, now this is part of the flower of saffron. This is mentioned in the Song of Solomon. And each one of these little pieces is, is taken by hand early in the morning before the sun comes up. Very, very costly oil. This is probably worth more than gold. Other leaves, flowering tops, stalks would have been chamomile, clary sage, thyme, basil, marjoram, and geranium. And I showed you the cinnamon bark we have. Pine needles, spruce, and fir are all mentioned in the Bible. These are taken from the leaves as well. And then we have so many others, the flowering tops of Rosemary, lavender, these are some that you're probably very familiar with. Ginger is taken from the root. Now we use the whole plant for peppermint. Let me see if I have some here, here it is. This is peppermint leaves, but they will also include some of the stalk and some of the other plant parts for uh, peppermint, spearmint, some of the others. So in the case of certain plants, they may use uh, uh, other parts. For instance, for the orange tree, they'll use the leaves and the twigs to create the oil pedigree. Uh, while sweet orange comes from the actual peel or the rind of the fruit, as I showed you earlier, while the flower is used for the oil neroli. This is a rich floral essence that is extracted from the flower blossoms. It's so amazing that all 
Three of these essential oils come from the same plant, but they're all very unique in their odor and in their therapeutic properties. And so you could see all these different essentials have a very unique characteristic and therapeutic properties and benefits, which differ depending on, of course, their soil and where they've been grown, the country in which they come from. So within each plant's oil is a complex of a matrix of multiple uh, hundreds and hundreds of chemical constituents. And because of that, sometimes it's very unpredictable of what you might see come from that plant. And one of the most amazing things is that because of the way God designed it, bacteria and viruses are unable to build up a resistance to these plants and mutate because the essentials have an intelligence to them. That's something that synthetic drugs doesn't have. And so we see that while uh, antibiotic might just go through and destroy everything in its path, we see yet Yahweh has created these to outsmart the bacterial virus. They're not able to adapt and mutate against these. And so there's so many com complex constituents healing in these oils. And that's something I want to share with you as we go through this program. So modern medicine really has attempted to try to duplicate these chemical constituents and these healing capabilities, but they can't. You see, man-made pharmaceuticals lacks that intelligent and that life force in the healing oils of the Bible. So most synthetic prescriptions really have a lot of undesirable side effects that really can be detrimental. So for you, dear one, you're faced with a choice of which pill to take. Are you going to continue to, to go the way of the world or will you choose Yahweh's way in choosing life? I want to encourage you today to give these a try and look at the powerful benefits that you can get from those. And one of those souls is cedar wood. Let's take a look at this. Lebanon, the home of the cedar, derives its name from the root word Laban, meaning white. Its mountains are blanketed with snow most of the year, providing the necessary moisture which keeps the trees thriving upon its slopes. Fed by the melting streams of water, the trees yield up a fragrance that fills the valleys and covers the hills with a fragrance of spiritual elevation. What a beautiful picture of the Bride of Messiah to be planted upon the mountains in the Garden of God, elevated in heavenly places in Christ, filling the depressions and reaching the heights while continually offering up a fragrance that reveals her source of life. The cedar tree has long stood as a symbol of eternal life and is also known predominantly for its fragrance. In Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 11, it says, The smell of your garments is like the smell of Lebanon. The smell of Lebanon was the smell of the cedar tree, a tree that would yield up a fragrance day after day, night after night, unchanging with passing time. Summer and winter, in tropical heat or mountain cold, the cedar gave up its perfume for the garments of the king. The very name by which this tree was known, Erez in Hebrew, means firmly rooted and strong. It is this tree that has been held in such high esteem, not only for its vigor and beauty, but also for its fragrance and lasting quality of its wood. And what an amazing fragrance it does have. It abides even though the tree may be cut down and sawed into boards, beams, and pillars. Hardly any wood of its kind unites so many good qualities as the cedar. And its wood is not only pleasing to the eye with its red stripes, but it exhales an agreeable smell that some people consider imperishable. Isn't this a picture of our Savior and speaks of the fragrance of His life? Cedar, which is spiritually symbolic of strength, serves as a hedge of protection. In Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 17, it says, The beams of our house are cedar, and our rafters are fir. Just as the bride's trousseau, or cedar chest, holds her treasures and protects them from moths and silverfish, a believer's heart should be like that old cedar chest. For this is where God's treasure lies, and we need to guard our heart so that the enemy cannot come in and steal your joy or peace, because he wants you to be like that heavenly fragrance, cedar wood.
Let's take a look now at Cedar Woods Healing Properties. The Cedars of Lebanon is the highest known substance in sesquiterpenes, 98%, which actually oxygenates the brain and it supports clear thinking. This is probably why Solomon was the wisest man to live because in the scriptures it tells us that he built his temple and his palace out of the Cedars of Lebanon. Now, when I mentioned the sesquiterpenes, this is actually a, com a chemical component or constituent that is within the essential oil. So what's amazing about cedar wood and the fact that it has this uh, sesquiterpenes, and I'm gonna open it and just smell it now, it's able to delete and erase misinformation written at the DNA level, which is pretty amazing when you think about it, as a result of trauma, or abuse, loss, or you know any kind of generational things that's going on, any kind of limiting beliefs. Cedarwood also has that ability to act as an antidepressant. And so cedarwood may also be used as a, a general oil to help stimulate the mind. It actually stimulates the pineal, pineal gland, which releases melatonin. So that's great to know, isn't it? It's an antioxidant hormone associated with deep sleep. So we know that if you have trouble sleeping at night, you might want to go get you some cedar wood essential oil. The fragrance is amazing. It stimulates the limbic region of the brain, the center of emotions, and the pineal gland, which releases melatonin. And so there's so much research behind this particular oil. It makes it just a powerful tool in your hand. And so there's been a lot of successful treatment for ADD and AH or ADHD in children. And so this is great to know for calming and it's a purifying property. Now, if you know your scriptures, you'll remember that the priest anointed their thumb and their big toe, remember, in the right ear. These were the trigger points. And uh, what they found, recent studies have discovered that this actually clears fears of the unknown, helps with mental blocks against learning. The big toe is also a point for clearing addictions and compulsive behavior. So the way to use cedarwood would be to diffuse it, or you can use it topically on location. Of course, you want to make sure that you got to check your allergy. If you have any kind of allergies, you want to know about that. Um, I don't recommend using it with young, very, very young children under five. Uh, that's not recommended, but for anyone else, that's okay. And so you want to definitely um, get a copy of Heal With All and check your back of the book here on the data sheets. This will give you all the information you need for using the oils and their safety and precautions. This is very important to know. Um, generally though, cedar wood is non-toxic, non-irritating, and it also doesn't cause any kind of sensitivity. So that's great to know. Now, how have I used cedar wood? It's one of my favorites. Um, it's great for arthritis, rheumatism, it helps with fluid retention. And here's the most important thing that I found. It can reduce hardening of the arteries. So this is very good. It also uh, stimulates the lymphatic system. So that's good if you're trying to lose weight too. Mentally, it just sort of brings some kind of a peace or just a, a breathe, you know, you just get to take a deep breath because it's sort of like being out in the woods. You just take that deep breath and you can really um, clear your head, if you will. So it really helps with concentration and mental clarity. Some of the other uses um, is for depression, anxiety, exhaustion, stress. And so it's good for um, the respiratory system. That's something else. If you've got phlegm and uh, bronchitis, asthma, colds, flus, there's just so many uses for this particular oil. Um, just about every respiratory complaint, this would be one of my first tools to reach for. And so you want to definitely um, get a hold of some oil if you can. Um, this is cedar wood. And when you're shopping online, you want to make sure that you get a pure therapeutic grade essential oil. You don't want to just use something from Walmart or <laughs> health food store locally because we don't know what it contains. And we want to make sure you get a pure, uh, good oil in your hand. Now, urinary tract infections is something that I've used it for. Kidney, bladder complaints, um, it's really great for that. Um, I, I want to tell you a really funny story. Actually, I was helping the man out with some pay, uh, aches and pains that he had. 
And uh, he noticed that when he used the cedar wood, uh, it was not only healing the pain, but he was applying it to an area on his kneecap and he noticed his hair started to grow back. And so he was a bald man, so he thought, gee, if it helps here, maybe I should rub it on my head. <laughs> and so he started putting the uh, cedar wood on his head and his hair started to grow back. <laughs> so it's really great for the skin and hair. It's great for acne, um, any kind of skin infections, fungal infections, insect bites. It's just, there's just a long list of ways you can use it. But hair loss is a really big one. Now, it's great, as I mentioned, for anxiety. Um, it helps just to calm you. It's, there's so many other uses for this. Again, you want to get a copy of Heal With Oil and take a look at that and get some other, maybe some things that you might find beneficial. We're going to just take a break now and take a look at some of the questions we have from our viewers. All I'm asking is the truth. If you take the blue pill, you can remain sick and continue to go to your doctor each day. Or I'm offering you the red pill, which will take you down Alice's wonderland of rabbit hole of reality. Wait. <laughs> There's probably an essential for that, though. <laughs> Let's take a look at your question. I'm just kidding, you guys. If you've seen The Matrix, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, Dorothy from Brooksville, Florida writes, Rebecca, I'm very excited about essential oils. I would like to start using them regularly and start getting away from the prescription drugs I'm taking. How should I go about doing that? Oh, wow. Well, first of all, I want to recommend if you're, you know, seeing a doctor, you definitely want to make sure that they understand that you're looking for natural alternatives and ways to maybe minimize using prescription drugs. So you want to involve your doctor and you also might want to consider looking into getting um, with a certified aromatherapist who can help you and guide you in which oils you need to use, which would be beneficial. Because we're not, you know, again, this is not a magic pill, magic bullet. This is uh, just to enhance your body and help assist your body to build up its immunity, help support it in the healing process. And so that's really what essentials do. It's not like, you know, going to make it all go away, disappear for you. It, there's certainly going to be people who need to continue to take their medications, follow the doctor's directions. Um, so it's a lifestyle change. It, it really is. It's part of your lifestyle. You just need to sort of slowly incorporate them into your life, try to see what works and what doesn't work for you. Okay, yeah. let's go to the next one. Ginny in Midlothian, Virginia writes, I have a problem with is insomnia and I really hate the sleep aids I've been buying. I'm looking for a more natural way of getting to sleep at night. Which essential oil do you recommend? Mm -hmm. Well, Ginny, I'm from Virginia too. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. I love Virginia. I haven't been there in years, but if you are having trouble sleeping, there's several oils that you could use. Um, of course, cedar wood would be number one. Um, mm -hmm. This is gonna help with your melatonin, uh, you know, and is, you know, help you sleep better at night. Spikenard is another one that's known to be a natural sedative. It'll help you calm down, help you to, you know, maybe get a nice deeper sleep and get into that um, dream state. Lavender is a good one. Lavender. Lavender is a very popular oil. Most people are very familiar with that one. That's mm -hmm. a great oil too. So I know a lot of people that have tried those, and there's probably many, many others that you could, you know, maybe go to your book and take a look and see what you find that what will work for you. We got time for one more. Arlene in Lansing, Michigan writes, Rebecca, my son Timmy recently started first grade and the teacher had contacted me about his hyperactivity. They are suggesting I take him to a doctor to get a prescription drug for him to calm down. 
is there anything I can do that requires uh, the that doesn't require the use of drugs? Mm. Well, you know, uh, I, I there are a lot of school systems that are starting to become more aware of essential oils because of so many people out there talking about them now, and so they're allowing parents to bring, you know, let their children bring like an inhaler or maybe a pocket diffuser or something that they can carry with them and that'll help them to be more calm using some of like say lavender, cedarwood obviously as we mentioned for ADD or mm. uh, you know the AHDH. Doesn't uh, cedarwood help with memory too? Absolutely. Um, they had test studies that showed that uh, not only cedarwood but lemon and grapefruit actually increased the child's concentration. They tested higher on their, you know, their test, and so it was actually very beneficial for them. I know some teachers will diffuse oils in the classroom. Of course, they need to get permission from their parents to do that in case, in case of um, allergic reactions or any kind of allergies or sensitivity to things. So, yeah, yeah certainly. I think they helped our mm -hmm. son Dallas, too. Yeah. Um, I know that, actually, do you remember Judah? years ago used to have the asthma right. and thank goodness we discovered the essential oils and he was just breathing them as he was going through the home you know because we use them in the home all the time and now he's perfectly fine mm. he's just been you know great so we've you know we enjoy getting your questions please don't hesitate to contact us and write us if you have any kind of questions you want to ask thank you for watching and we'll see you soon